What is up everyone? Okay, today we, we get a little emotional. I've already filmed the bulk part of the video. Definitely cried a bit towards the end. So strap in, but we're just touching on a lot of just things you guys were asking me about that you wanted me to chat about. I'm glad to chat with y'all with some coffee. Cheers. I could talk all day. I love to talk. So I'm also going to kind of show you what I do to like touch up my makeup before like going out in the evening or something. Uh, there are certain things I've kind of always done, but I don't talk about a lot here. So I thought that'd be fun to do that while talking about life, baby. Let me know below. Are you doing your makeup while watching this? I'm always curious. Like when are you watching YouTube videos? Is it when you're getting ready? Is it in the evening? Like with a bubble bath? I know I watch it and all like I watch a lot of it while I'm like folding laundry and doing chores, but I also love to watch YouTube videos in the evening when I'm doing like some skincare or in the morning when I'm getting ready, if I have the time. <laughs> Sometimes I'm chasing a toddler around. It just depends. But I did want to take a second to thank today's video sponsor, which is Casetify. Listen, I get more questions than anything about my phone cases. Case Testify, baby. The reason I love them is because they're slim, but they're also protective. I'm never worried. I drop my phone all the time. I know some of you guys do too, literally four times a day typically. And I never am worried about the screen cracking or something breaking. I've never ever had any issues with these. So their impact cases have this double layer of Chi Tech which is what protects it. They're like drop test approved to up to like six and a half feet. It's crazy. And I just feel like they're more protective than a lot of the cheaper cases I've tried in the past from like Amazon. But the reason I also love them is because they come in so many designs. You can customize them to really match what you like, your personality. So you can pick your favorite color, your favorite print. You can also add your name or monogram to really make it yours. I love doing that. Plus Casetify has an antimicrobial coating on all of their phones that kills like 99% of germs. So it keeps your phone germ-free, which is awesome. Also their impact and ultra impact cases are made with 50% recycled material, which I think is so cool. So I have four cases I've shown you before. I love them. This is the one I currently have on my phone. It's this really pretty like lavender lilac color. And I just have my name going up the back, which I love. And then I have the one that looks like Taylor Swift's lover album cover. I love this one. It looks like watercolor with these stars and pastel colors. They also have compostable cases. So that's what this one is here. And I even personalized it with my name etched in on the bottom there. This is definitely one of my favorites. It is this really cute one with gemstones all over it. I love it and I love the pink on the outside. So I trust these cases so thoroughly. I'm gonna show you right now, me doing a little drop test so I can prove to you, these are so super protective. I can drop it and feel confident that nothing's gonna go wrong. But then again, on top of it, these cases are so freaking cute. So if you're someone that is about to get a new iPhone or maybe you're just kind of tired of your old case, you're ready to jazz it up a bit and freshen it up, you should definitely try a case to case right now if you go to casefy.com slash jessica braun you can get 15 percent off today that is an awesome deal they have so many cute ones i have other ones i didn't even show you today i have created quite a collection because i love these cases so much thank you so much case defy for sponsoring this portion of the video now let's dive into getting real and talking about some deep life stuff okay <laughs> buckle up buckaroo Alrighty, we've got some nice warm coffee this is what was called a pistachio latte from like a local coffee shop and we treat ourselves a couple times a month to like nice coffee <sighs> i don't know who like what other coffee places make one but i love pistachio and it's so like subtle but really good see the problem is every time i taste really good coffee i try to like make it at home and it's never even close but then i waste money on ingredients and i'm like should have just gone back to the coffee shop and just gotten another one i want to start with the question i got the most of and i don't know that i've ever gotten this question this many times so quickly but a lot of you guys ask the question what do you do when you need some kind of stress relief or you're feeling overwhelmed what is something that like i typically do for myself the first thing that came to mind is actually something we just did, which is to go on a walk. I'm reading a book right now. It's called like a walk around the block or something like that. It's not all about walking. It just happens to be in the name I'm now realizing. Each chapter is basically this guy learning a lot about the things around him. So like one chapter is just on grass and lawns. And then one chapter is all on like, where does our sewage go? And then one chapter is all on like going on walks. It's so incredibly interesting to learn about all these things that we all kind of just take for granted in our daily lives, or I know I do, but he does a chapter on walking and he talks a lot about how important it is, not just like, could it be good for you when it comes to like fitness levels, but it's also just so good for you mentally. Like it has been proven time and time and time and time again in all kinds of research that it is incredibly good for your mental health. I realized this pretty quickly. I never really 
cared about going on walks like we did it from time to time. But once I had my baby three years ago, I suffered from a lot of postpartum depression and just all kinds of stuff. And one of the biggest things that helped me was going on walks. I don't know what the magic recipe is about being outside and walking. And we've been so much better about intentionally carving time in most of our days to walk, whether it's for 10 minutes or 30 minutes. It just is amazing. And for me, like we've been trying to do it in the middle of the day when we can. I remember someone I used to work with, a friend of mine actually, would go on walks during half of her lunch break. So she would eat her lunch kind of quickly and then go on a walk for the rest of the time. And I remember at the time thinking like, wow, like I can't believe she'd want to spend her time doing that. Like I'd much rather just like sit and chill and eat. But now looking back, I'm like, wait, she was onto something because A, it kind of wakes you up midday. But anyway, I digress. Also, I forgot, I was also gonna kind of touch up my makeup because I uh, did just go on a walk and it is like 80 something degrees, so it's warm. And my makeup I don't think looks bad by any means, but I kind of wanted to share with you guys what I do to like just quickly touch up my makeup. I'm gonna say quickly, but I'll be taking forever because I'm just gonna be talking. When I put my makeup on in the morning and maybe it's like after work or whatever it is and I'm wanting to touch it up before maybe like going out. Walking, I'm telling you, if you have not kind of regularly tried it, try it. Even if you don't have any like mental health issues. I don't know anyone that doesn't have some kind of, I mean, you know, it's just magic. It took me a while to see it, but it is. That is my biggest stress reliever. I also read that book all about rest and how important that is and not just rest like sleep, but like, stepping away from work and walking is one of the things they recommend too because sometimes the most creative best ideas maybe something that you've been stumped on for a while or you've got writer's block or whatever taking a walk can unlock parts of your brain that maybe for that week or two that you were kind of stuck have just been blocked so anyway i could talk about walking for a long time okay so one of the things i like to do is grab like a powder foundation this is the revolution conceal and define satin matte powder and I'll grab the sponge I use like in the morning so it's usually a little bit moist and I will get some on the sponge and tap it in the areas that my makeup always wears away like my nose definitely my chin and then anywhere else I just feel like needs to be evened out because I don't typically go back in with like foundation and stuff unless it's like my skin is just totally wrecked but Typically, this is just what I do. This is a really nice powder foundation. I'm really, really liking it. So I also got a lot of questions about making friendships as an adult. So this one says, how to make and grow friendships as an adult. This is something I'm still learning. <laughs> but we have made like newer friends, not like in the past year, but like in the past three or four years, we have made some new friends. And they weren't ones we knew from you know school or from other things in the past. They were ones we kind of organically came across. I am not the best at, I wanna say not good at meeting new people. Sometimes I'll put a little bit fresh concealer. This is the Catrice True Skin Concealer. I've been talking about it in so many videos, I really like it. But I really am I'm not the best at meeting new people because I feel like I just like shut down. I can be very convincing when it comes to like, I'll tell people like, oh yeah, I'm kind of introverted. And they're like, no, you're not. I'm like, okay, first of all, you don't know me. <laughs> but like what you don't see for a lot of people is the inner turmoil in there. You know, as I'm meeting someone new or, or going into a new situation, I am horribly nervous. I'm sweating through my pits. Like that's just who I am. And it takes me so long to feel comfortable around someone, but I can pretend. I can fake it till I make it. I've been doing it for years. And I think a lot of us are good at that. You know what I mean? You can feel a certain way, but you it doesn't necessarily show. So I feel like because of that, I have not always been the best at making friends, even when I was younger. And I was not great at keeping friends. When I was in high school, I feel like I really struggled to have one good girlfriend because boys always got in the way. I was definitely someone, and I'm so thankful that I've like grown out of this, but I was definitely someone that like, cared a lot about boys. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but I would sometimes put that over friendships. And that is where I think I screwed up so many times, whether it was in college and high school. And it's, you know, I look back and I definitely have regrets over certain things and certain friendships that wouldn't have ended if it weren't for my own mistakes and like other people. And anyway, I'm getting into the weeds here, but my point is what I've learned, <laughs> How did I get to this part? I'm so sorry, you guys signed up for this. You clicked the video. I'm gonna grab the Flower Heat Wave bronzer and just kind of reapply. That's something I feel like sometimes bronzer will wear off a little bit and I feel like I need that back in my skin, especially if I'm going back out and I want it to look a little more put together. I love bronzer, you guys. So if you meet someone and you feel like, dang, I could see myself like being friends with this person, then make an effort. Text them. If you got their number and you're like, yeah, we should hang out sometime, 
actually make plans, actually make plans and stick to them. And I know that's easier said than done. Listen, we all love canceling plans, please. I'd much rather be at home on the couch on a Saturday night than anywhere else. If you really are like feeling like you want more friends and you wanna kind of branch out, you have to make plans and you have to follow through with them because the second you do, you'll hang out again and you might see like, oh, like, wow, like I really do like this person as a friend or you'll be like, okay, no, glad we did it, maybe not. It's kind of like dating in a way, isn't it? It really is and I feel like no one teaches us how to like, make and keep friends. I feel like it's something that's just so so much trial and error. It could be luck. It could be that you, like my husband's best friend, he met when they were in preschool and they're still close. Like, and now one of my best friends is that best friend's wife. Like it, that worked out the way it is, but that was just pure luck that we all happen to get along the way that we do as adults, you know what I mean? It doesn't always work out that way. So like other friends I've made, I feel like you really do have to make an effort and it can be really hard, especially depending on your life situation. Maybe you work two jobs and you just don't have the time or maybe you you know, have young kids and that adds another layer. I mean, there's so much to it. But one big thing that I have realized, I kind of regret putting on that second layer of concealer. A lot of times I'll go in with like something like a lighter coverage concealer because then I feel like it'll blend really nicely into the concealer that was like already there. So that was my bad, but, oh well. but one of my biggest things I've learned in the past few years is having shared experiences is what relationships are based on, whether it's a like love relationship or like a friendship. Because once you've had more than a couple shared experiences, whether it's like, you know, you guys went to a show together and so you can giggle about an inside joke from that, or you traveled with them, those all start to build kind of the building blocks of your friendship or your relationship. And I don't think I'd realized the value in that until recently. And I think that's part of why when you don't know someone well and you're just getting to know them and you feel like it's all small talk, a lot of times it is small talk because you don't have things to kind of base your conversation on. Whereas, you know, once someone knows more about your like family and stuff and you feel more comfortable, you can go into those kinds of deeper conversations or, you know, maybe something you guys have done together in the recent past springboards a deeper conversation with them. So I really feel like having those shared experiences, which means again, taking the time to actually like hang out with that person actually does matter and actually does make a difference. So I usually touch up my brows just a bit because a lot of times, sometimes like the tail ends will get a little bit rubbed off. So that looks nice. This was the Anastasia perfect brow pencil. Okay. So I got a question. Why do I only post sponsored vlogs? That is a very fair question. And honestly, it's one that I think I keep meaning to like address. Just haven't yet. It's not totally intentional. I only post two vlogs in a month and I have a contract with two different companies to post sponsored vlogs. The reality is I love vlogging. And I say in so many of my vlogs, like I really like doing them. I want to do them more often, but the issue is I don't always have the time. It takes time to vlog them. And if you saw like, we used to do weekly vlogs on my husband's channel and we don't do that so much anymore because it was taking away from my own home time. So because I'm limiting how much I'm allowing myself to vlog so that I can still have a life not on camera, trying to do those two sponsored vlogs that I'm already committed to doing and then doing more on top of that is just a little bit too much for me right now. Maybe in the future I'll be able to do like a vlog a week and not all of them would be sponsored, but right now that's just kind of the way the cookie has crumbled. The reality is I love the two companies I've worked with for years. And so it's always exciting to do it. It's not a surprise to you guys to hear me talking about them. And it's just a good fit because I genuinely do love both of those brands. So that's kind of where that is. I don't know that it's always gonna be that way. I mean, if the companies approached me again and said, hey, would you like to do another long-term contract? Of course I would say yes, because I love them. That's why those are always seeming to be sponsored. It's really because I wish I could do more vlogs and I can't and I'm contracted to do them every month. Does that make sense? Now, the other reality is I could probably do some of the sponsorships in other video styles, but I just feel like those two brands work so well within vlogs that it just makes sense to me to do it that way. So that's more of a choice I've made. So I hope that made sense. Like I said, I'm sure not every vlog in the future of my channel is always gonna be sponsored, but you obviously can see around the sponsored portion nothing else in the video is affected by that. So it's not like, you know what I mean? It really is just that like kind of ad break. What else do I do to touch up? Oh, a lot of times I'll grab like an eyeshadow and just like put maybe just a little bit more on or I'll put a little bit deeper in the outer corner, especially if it is like even times. <laughs> Can't decide if this is gonna be a long or a short video because I, I have a lot to say, but I don't have a lot of like makeup to do, but we can just chat. Ooh, how is your nephew who got in the accident? He is remarkably just fine. 
if you heard about it, I, I don't even want to rehash it. I can link the video where I talk about what happened because honestly, I don't want to get into it. He's totally fine. I am amazed at the human body and the power of prayer. And like, there's just so much that went into that. And so he is remarkably lovely. And that just makes me happy. He's totally his normal self. So thank you for asking. That was very, very sweet. We went to a cabin recently to celebrate my parents' 50th anniversary. And ooh, this color is pretty. This is the color dusk right there. It's kind of like a shimmery brown. It's blending really easily too. But he was able to go to that and he was just fine. We were swimming, he was fine. So that is, that's just wonderful. Also, just like a little update on that trip. I know some of you guys were asking, we went to the Smoky Mountains and it was so lovely. We've gone there a couple times. In, like you can rent cabins. There are a million cabins on VRBO and Airbnb and even other websites. Um, Vacasa is actually who we booked it through this time. It was lovely. All my entire family was able to have like their own bedroom and bathroom in there. There were like hot tubs, amazing views. And we all just kind of split, you know, the cost. So it worked really well for something like that. You guys, we saw like three bears, like straight up. And they warned you like, you know, beware of bears. They're around. If you leave trash out and it's not like in the bear, like locked trash box, you will see bears. And sure enough, like literally I'll pop a picture on the screen, a bear just literally digging through the trash of our neighbor cabin. Um, because I don't know what in the world the bear was able to just lift the lid and get the trash out. So our cabin had like the right kind of bear box trash cans that they couldn't open. But this one, anyway, sometimes I'll take like a liner. This is just the makeup by Mario one and just kind of touch up the wing. Sometimes I'll make it a little more dramatic, you know, depending on what we're doing. How is Gigi? So she is good. That's if you're new to my channel. Uh, I've got junk in my teeth, you guys. Using Stila Lilium. So for blush, I'll typically like just reapply because I love blush and you can never have enough in my opinion. It's just like a cream blush. It's one of my favorite. Anyway, she just started swimming lessons and I told Tyler, I was like, listen, I will do something else with her. Like I'll take her to dance class if that's what she's interested in, like ballet, something like that. But swimming lessons gives me like heart palpitations. I just sweat. I'm like, I cannot, I can't. First of all, I hated swimming lessons as a kid. I'm glad my mom put me in them because I do think, I mean, I would be able to like save myself if I run, but I'm not a great swimmer. And it, it just made me so nervous as a kid. So the whole environment, not my speed, <laughs> but on top of it all, it being my little three-year-old in the water, like without any like floaties and stuff, terrifying. And of course they've got, anyway, they have their whole system. So Tyler took her to her first one the other day and she did so well and she went underwater and I was so proud. Tyler sending me videos. And I'm literally grocery shopping, like crying in the <laughs> checkout line. So proud of her. So she has obviously more lessons and a lot, a long ways to go, but so, so proud of that sweet girl. She was so brave and we started potty training her and she's pretty much potty trained. It kind of happened quickly. And I'm sure some of you guys are rolling your eyes because I would remember when she was younger and she would not sleep through the night, I would hear people like on YouTube be like, oh my gosh, my kid's been sleeping through the night since he was like two months old. I'm like, well, good for you. <laughs> Mine's not and she's nine months old. <laughs> so if you're someone that's like potty training and you're feeling that way towards me, I'm sorry. But I'm so thankful because we had a lot of rough times with her with other things that just took her forever to understand or took her forever to do. So it was nice to have one thing that she picked up quickly. And I think part of it is, you know, she was showing an interest in the potty for a while, but I, I kept telling myself like, Jessica, don't start it too soon because she'll kind of, I feel like we'll know when she's ready. And she, we just kind of knew we were like this weekend, we're going to be home most of the weekend. Let's just try it. And she rocked it after the first few accidents in her little big girl underwear, she understood and she's been telling us that she needs to go and she goes on her little potty seat. But we did, we tried like a little chart and she liked that right at the beginning, but we kind of forgot about it and she kind of forgot about it literally in the first day. She didn't seem to care, like it was fun for her, but it wasn't like the driving force behind her doing it. And then we had like these little squishy things I bought on Amazon. It was like a pack of, I don't know, 20 or 30 little squishy things as like prizes for her. Um, and I kind of gave them to her arbitrarily, like after she would go, it wasn't every time. I don't know. I'm telling you, it was not a real system, but I'm just very thankful. So we'll see. We're still, I mean, it's still new to her, but she is, she is rocking it. Got another question about what is my favorite meal to cook? Okay. I don't know if this is my favorite ever, but it's the one I made last night and it's one of our favorites that we make all the time and it's pretty easy. So all you do is you make some kind of base like rice, quinoa, couscous, whatever you're into. We made quinoa last night, but we switch it up all the time. So couscous on the bottom 
and then we will roast some broccoli in the oven, which is my favorite way to cook most vegetables. Just olive oil, salt, and pepper in the oven. I'll take cherry tomatoes and cut them all in half, and then I'll heat some black beans from a can up on the stove. Oh, and then you serve it with some kind of sausage. So we, <laughs> we're not vegan or vegetarian, but we fell in love with this vegan sausage from Field Roast. It's like their apple sage, and it's made of like potatoes and like, it's so, like there's something about the taste and texture of it we both love, so we just keep buying it even though we also eat regular sausage. Anyway, it's so good in this. So we'll heat that up on the stove basically, and then I'll cut it up into bite-sized pieces and you make a bowl with all of it. With the rice or couscous or whatever, the sausage, cherry tomatoes, and broccoli. Tyler likes black beans on his, I don't. I, it, I feel like it takes over the whole thing and I don't like that. So black beans if you want, and then I'll typically put like honey mustard on it. It is so, Good. And the only reason we ever tried making this, and it's kind of our own version of it, was we were at some restaurant a long time ago, a couple years ago, and it was like a vegan protein bowl. And it was very, very similar. And so we were like, we can make that at home. So we did. <sighs> and it is so good. That's all. So you should definitely try it. <laughs> what do you miss most about back to school season? Uh, freaking buying school supplies, man. I was telling my oldest brother this. I genuinely miss buying school supplies. It's one of my favorite things. That's part of what I even liked about just teaching in general. So he was kind of giggling. He's like, really? That's what you miss? I'm like, absolutely. That's what I miss. There's just something about it. You got your little list from school and you're, you know, checking everything off. And especially when you're a kid, you're like, these are mine. Like, I don't know, man. There's something happy to me about it. So that is definitely a big piece of it. Our old, old neighborhood when we were kids used to do this back to school parade. And I'm pretty sure our neighborhood we live in now I think they do something similar where you like decorate your bike and you go around the neighborhood and it's just all the kids before school starts. It's just so freaking cute. So it's those kinds of things that just give me all the feels. Also, I'm someone that just liked school. If I could be a lifetime student, I totally would. So that's that's honestly what I miss. And of course, Gigi, she will eventually be in school. That was another question I got, like what are our plans with her? Like are we planning on doing preschool with her at all? We are, so we did tour some preschools recently and we're pretty sure we're gonna wait and start her in like the second semester, if you will. So like in January and February. We're not in a huge rush, but we also want her to get that peer interaction and learning about what it's like to be in a school-like environment. Um, but also still like playing and learning and stuff. So that's kind of our plan. She'll still only be like three and a half. So she's still young. Then after that, I think she'd have one full year of preschool, preschool, and then it'd be kindergarten, right? Oh my gosh. My heart's time going. Oh my gosh. That is terrifying. I just saw a picture on Facebook of someone that I knew when she was like three and she's in seventh grade now. And I'm like, what? When do you put up fall decorations? I get yelled at for already starting. I know, I know. I, again, my motto is, man, let people like what they like. If you are someone that doesn't like fall and someone around you does, let them love fall. Who cares? It doesn't affect you. That's something my best friend Adam told me. And I'm like, you are so right. People just like what they like. And if it's not hurting anyone, why not, you know? So anyways, I'm using this lip liner, Laura Mercier in Plumberry. It's really nice, like slightly deeper than my lips kind of tone. It's a wooden pencil, so you always have to warm it up. You gotta sharpen it, but it stays in place really well. So if that's what you're looking for, this one, the, all of the Laura Mercier ones are really good. But all of the, I've gotten a lot of fall questions because uh, fall's my favorite season. Let me just like what I like. So uh, I was grocery shopping at my favorite store, Meyer, the other day, and they had some fall stuff out. And I was like, yes. I sent a snap to my brother like, it's happening because he loves fall and Halloween as much as I do. Anyway, I bought a few cute pumpkin decorations for like just our kitchen table. That's kind of a little more updated. Uh, we have, okay, listen, I love Halloween. So I have bought a lot of like very cheesy, Halloween type decor over the years. And so I'm trying to also get like some like a little more grown fall cute decor as well. And then maybe closer to Halloween, put out some of the like cheesy stuff. I want that for my kid. It's for me. I brought it home and Tyler and I always do this thing where if one of us grocery shops, when the other one gets back, we do a fashion show at lunch. And if you've watched The Office, you know, fashion show, fashion show, fashion show at lunch. And it's really just us showing the other person what groceries we bought. So I showed him all of them and I showed him the pumpkins and he was like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, that's right. Yeah, he loves fall too. All right, I'm gonna try MAC lipstick and Yash again. I, I feel like it makes my lips, I already have very lined lips, okay? 
I feel like it makes my lips look a little bit older. Literally 50% of you guys when I wore it in a video recently were like, I love it. And 50% were like, ew, I hate it. You can understand the conundrum I'm in. I do think it's a pretty color. Like it's very much a neutrally, but it's just matte. What is it? It's Yeah, it's their matte line. But this time I'm gonna plop it, top it with, oh boy, top it with a plumping gloss. It's the e.l.f. Lip Plumping Gloss in Champagne Glam. This is like perfect because it's slightly sheer, but it's got a little glitter to it. So I can still have the color I like, but it's not gonna look as drying. I've been enjoying this gloss lately. It does have that little tingly-ish plumpy feeling, but it's not nearly as strong as like the Buxom. So if that's too strong for you, you might like this. And this is one, like this color you can pair with like anything. I feel like that looks nice. TV show recommendations. Okay, Ted Lasso. If you haven't hopped on the bandwagon, it literally got like 20 Emmy nominations for the first season. Season two is coming out like every week, one new episode. It's on Apple TV. Listen, you have to pay for Apple TV. It's worth it. I have like six shows for you to watch on Apple TV. Ted Lasso, Central Park is a really cute cartoon for adults, but it's not an adult cartoon. It's not like Family Guy where it's like, it's definitely still for adults, but it's not nearly as like crude. So if you don't like Family Guy, anyway. Central Park Love and it's a musical. So a lot of people like from Hamilton and in musicals sing in it and there's music in every episode and it is awesome. The Morning Show with Steve Carell, Reese Witherspoon, Jennifer Aniston, Mark Duplass. It is, <laughs> that show is so freaking good. I feel like there are like three other shows I watch in there and now they're not coming to me. But anyway, Apple TV is totally worth it. Even if you just pay for like a month or two, watch all of those things and then you can like save money until the new episodes come out, I don't know. So really quickly, I got a question about what Apple Watch apps I use the most. Um, I definitely use, so my favorite weather app is AccuWeather, both on my phone and on here. So that's one I really, really like. Nike Running Club is the app I use to track like runs, whether it's on like a treadmill or outside. Spark is the app I use for my email, like on my iPad and even on my like desktop computer. And there's an app for this too, so I'm able to read emails that come through, which is really nice. I really like that. And then like I use the uh, fitness tracker to track workouts like, you know, hit ones or like outdoor walks, things like that. I use the Starbucks app a lot too, that one, because we I will typically like load money on onto my Starbucks like gift card on there. And then I can scan it just on my watch, which is really, really cool. So that's one I've been using a lot more lately. Those are probably my biggest ones, the ones I use the most, other than obviously also like the music app I use a lot. But if you have any like Apple Watch app recommendations, like ones that you use all the time, please let me know because I'd be curious. Ooh, good question. What's been the hardest part of having Gigi and what's the best? I was just telling someone that just had a baby the same exact thing. I feel like a big part of the struggle for me and a lot of people when they first have a baby is that, and I read this in an article in the New York Times a while ago, and I was like, that's what it was. Like, that's exactly it. You're kind of mourning the life that you had before. It's not to say that you don't love that baby so freaking much, but there is something to be said about your life just changing overnight. And suddenly you can't, as silly as it sounds, you can't just grab you know, your spouse and your keys and your phone and go out the door and go do something. It takes so much more prep and planning and maybe hiring a babysitter, you know. Even though those sound like trivial things, you don't realize how valuable that freedom is. And when that's kind of taken away from you, and when even when you're at home, you're always like almost on the clock, it is very hard to adjust to. You do adjust to it. It's like anything in life. Humans are made to be adaptable. Adaptations are a part of science and we adapt. That's what we do. But it takes time. And I really think that a big piece of it was just going through that mourning period of losing the life that I used to have with just my husband and now sharing it with her. Now, oh my gosh, <laughs> I cannot imagine my life without her. She brings me so much freaking joy. It's unbelievable. She makes me laugh every day. Like, and it was so hard to see in those first, now I really am going to get emotional. Oh, Jesse, come on. <laughs> It's so hard to see past the cloud of that postpartum life. It is so hard because you're, you're in it. You're in the thick of it and it's so foggy. You can't see how your life will be any different four months from now or a year from now, but time marches on and all of a sudden you wake up and you look over and you're like, oh my gosh, my kid and I are interacting and we're giggling at the same joke on the TV. It just goes so fast. <laughs> So if you're in it right now, I feel you, I feel you, I feel you. I cry every time I talk about it because it was so hard and so I feel you. You are not alone. I promise it gets 
so freaking awesome. Like all of the hardship right now pays for itself in dividends, I promise. All right, we're gonna end it there because I could just keep answering and chatting. That's why I do these videos once a month. If you wanna watch some more of my coffee chat videos, a lot of them I typically like get ready during like for real get ready if you wanna see that too. But we chat about all kinds of stuff here every month. So definitely check out my playlist. I'll have it linked below. Thank you guys so much for watching all the way to the end. I love you. I hope you'll subscribe, of course. I do these kinds of videos. I do some vlogs, but then I also do lots of makeup videos, lots of drugstore stuff. It's all good here, baby. Again, if you are interested in getting a new favorite phone case, I promise it will be your favorite. You can get 15% off by going to casetify.com slash Jessica Braun. Thank you, of course, Casetify for sponsoring a portion of this video, and I'll see you guys in my next one.